Ni hao. We learned previously that the word binary simply means composed of two things. This seems like it presents a problem when we try to use binary numbers, which are made up of just zero and one. For example, how can I count the fingers on my hand if I'm not allowed to use the number five? In this video, we'll explore the connections between binary numbers and our more commonly used decimal numbers, which will actually establish a pattern that can be used to interpret any other number bases as well. Look at this picture. How many apples do you see? Verbally, we can say that the number is six. There are six apples. But how would you write that number? If you are like most American school children, you've been trained using base 10 Arabic numerals. So you would write it like this. There are many other ways you could write it, however. It is necessary to establish both the numeral and base systems you are using. The number is six. This is the true quantity or idea. The numeral is the symbol used to express that number. Other examples of how we could write down the idea of six are shown here. Around the world, different people and different cultures have found it important to record numbers and they have used different sets of lines and dots to do so. The number six is still the same, only the written form is different. But that's not the end of the story. The base of the numeral also needs to be established. In most cultures throughout history, the base has been 10, which is likely due to humans having 10 fingers. So in common talk, assuming a base of 10 is typically safe to do. But that is not a safe assumption when discussing computers or digital codes. A couple other common bases are 2 and 16. Here we see different ways of representing that same number 6 using various bases. Obviously, there is a big difference between 6 apples and 110 apples. So be sure to establish the base clearly when communicating with either a human or a machine. So what does the base actually mean? Let's define it by examining the common decimal system. The prefix in the word decimal is deci, which means 10. So the decimal system and the base 10 system are the same thing. Base 10 means that there are 10 unique digits, which go from zero through nine. What is the first digit? Don't say one, that is a common mistake. The first digit is zero, and the last or largest digit is 9. Because the largest digit is 9, a strategy must be employed to represent numbers larger than 9. This is where the concept of digit position comes in. The various weights associated with each digit position are shown in this diagram. Notice this point in the middle. You probably know it as a decimal point, which is true, but technically only when using a decimal system. The more general term which can be applied to all bases is the radix point. The digit immediately to the left of the radix point gets multiplied by 1, or in other words, does not change. So a 7 written here is just a regular 7. But if a 7 is written one slot over, it gets multiplied by 10, and so represents a 70. One position further to the left gets multiplied by 100, so a 7 there would represent 700. We can see this weighting scheme contained in this simple example. The number 538 in a decimal system means 5 times 100 plus 3 times 10 plus 8 times 1, or 538. The whole pattern is summarized by these powers. Each digit position is 10 times larger than the position just to its right. And this pattern continues forever both to the left and the right of the radix point. So why do we call this a base 10 system? Because the base of these powers is 10. Why must that base be 10 rather than 8 or 55? Because there are 10 unique digits available. The largest digit is 9, which means that the number 10 requires use of the next digit position.
Those two reasons explain how we can interpret binary or base 2 numerals. In binary, there are two unique digits, 0 and 1. We call these bits, which is a shortening of binary digits. The highest bit available is a 1, which means that a value of 2 requires the use of the next bit position to the left. Therefore, the base of all these powers is 2. But the only change in this digit weighting scheme is that base. The exponents follow the exact same pattern as we saw for decimal. The position just to the left of the radix point carries a weight of 2 raised to the 0. Each position to the left increases the exponent by 1. Each position to the right decreases the exponent by 1. Let's cement our understanding with a couple of questions. You should pause the video after I ask each question and write down an answer before resuming. First question, what is the largest value you can express with four decimal digits? The answer is 9,999 base 10. To answer this, you first identify the largest digit available, which is 9, and repeat that for all the digits being used, thus 9999. This happens to also equal 10 raised to the 4 minus 1. Take note of this pattern because you can apply it to any base or number of digits. The base of this power is the base of the numerals being used. The exponent is the number of digits being used. You then compute that power and subtract 1 to obtain the result. Now apply both of these approaches to the second question. What is the largest value you can express with 4 bits? Note that the word bit implies this is a binary system. The answer is 1111, base 2. The largest bit available is 1, and you repeat that 4 times. This is also equal to 2 raised to the 4 minus 1. Remember that 2 is the base being used, and the 4 is the number of digits. Notice how carefully I read the answer as 1111 rather than 1111. That last verbal phrasing implies a decimal system. 1111 in binary is actually a much smaller number, just 15 in decimal. Now for the final question, which lets you extend these same ideas to a new base. What is the largest value you can express with four base 8 digits? The answer is 777 base 8. Again, you take the largest digit, 7, and repeat it the number of digits being used, 3. This is also equal to 8 raised to the 3 minus 1. I hope you can see how this pattern could be applied to any base system with any number of digits. On the previous slide, I used a notation that I should clarify. The base of the number being written is expressed by a subscript following the number. In this example, we see 13, base 10, is equal to 1101, base 2, indicating that base is important, right? If I left off both of these subscripts, it would read 13 equals 1101, which obviously is not true. If you see a number written without a base, it is usually safe to assume that the base is 10, since that is the common system used in our language. However, that is not always the case. It is important to clarify what base is being used, whether you are the sender or receiver of the message. And as another reminder, when you hear the word decimal, it means the same thing as base 10. When you hear the word binary, it means the same thing as base 2. So how can we apply the binary numeral system to interpret a number? Let's look at this example. We see 101. The best way to work through this is right to left. The numeral at the far right carries a weight of 2 raised to the 0. So down here, we write the numeral 1 multiplied by its weight, 2 raised to the 0. The middle numeral carries a weight of 2 raised to the 1. So the middle product is 0 times 2 raised to the 1. Lastly, 
This numeral carries a weight of 2 raised to the 2. So the left product is 1 times 2 raised to the 2. Interpreting this in decimal, the products become 4, 0, and 1. And all of those are added together, which yields a final value of 5. Notice how this pattern here is identical to what we saw a few slides prior for decimal weights. It just feels strange to most people when they're not viewing the world through their decimal lenses. This slide here shows the powers of 2 ranging from 2 raised to negative 10 through 2 raised to positive 10. You are not required to memorize these tables. You can always reference these tables later or simply use your calculator to figure out the value of any of these powers. However, I do recommend memorizing most of this left table from 2 raised to the 0 through 2 raised to 8. You'll be using these numbers frequently, and having them memorized will save you time moving forward. At this point, I have most of the positive exponents memorized, but every so often I just can't remember 2 raised to 6. In that situation, I fall back on the simple pattern that each next power is twice as large as the one before it. So when I struggle with 2 raised to 6, I recall that 2 raised to 5 equals 32, and then double 32 to get 64. Combining the ideas discussed so far, this table shows how to count from decimal 0 to 15 in binary using 4 bits. We can verify any of these values by applying the bit position weights. For example, here is 0, 1, 1, 1. This represents 2 raised to 0 plus 2 raised to 1 plus 2 raised to 2, or 1 plus 2 plus 4, which equals decimal 7. Given this information, how many bits are required to count to 15? It's clear from the table that we need at least 4 bits. We certainly could use more bits than that but those extra bits would just be leading zeros. How many bits are required to count to 16? Well, 15 is the absolute max number we can reach with 4 bits, so we would need a fifth bit to express 16. In fact, 16 would be written in binary as 10000. In general, this formula tells us the largest decimal number we can express with a given amount of bits. With 4 bits, n equals 4, and this formula shows that 15 is the largest possible number. With 5 bits, n equals 5, and we see that we could count up to 31. And one more example, with 8 bits, we could count up to 255. Side note, this whole discussion is assuming unsigned binary. We'll discuss negative values in a later lesson. Two important terms are defined here. In a binary number, the most significant bit, or MSB, is the leftmost bit. It is called most significant because it carries the largest weight. Conversely, the least significant bit, or LSB, is the rightmost bit. So when you see those abbreviations in the future, you should know on which side of the number to look. Pause the video for a few seconds and see if you can identify any patterns in these binary sequences. The big pattern to notice is the alternating zeros and ones with doubling periodicity. What does that mean? Look at the LSB on the right. Notice how it goes 0, 1, 0, 1, all the way down the table. In the next bit over, we see the same pattern of alternating between zeros and ones, but at a lower frequency. Here there are two zeros, then two ones, all the way down. In the next column over, again we see the same pattern, but now it remains on the same bit value for four rows. And finally, with the MSB, we see a zero for eight rows before flipping over to ones. So in every column, there is an alternating pattern of zeros and ones. And as we move to the left, it switches every one row, then two rows, then four rows, then eight rows. I hope you get some enjoyment out of searching for patterns. Much of digital design is identifying patterns like this and taking advantage of them to help design a useful circuit. 
I would dive into details here, but that big statement is really what the rest of this course is all about.